take me through the title game. Those five weeks, you had some big performances, a couple eleven point games like Tony was just asking about the title game. How do you process that stretch of of your time here in Carolina? And what does it kind of signify to you as far as all the stuff that you had to get through to get to that point when suddenly your game starts to reveal itself? For sure. Um, it's just a steady growth and a steady uh, just maturity about the game and just knowing that there's going to be ups and downs. And uh, I've leaned on my brother a lot just with the ups and downs and being injured and uh, not being able to play, then being able to play, and then just uh, knowing what to do. Because a big thing was is that um, I remember uh, I was on my phone. I was on the phone with my brother, and he told me that uh, you have to be mentally prepared and physically prepared. Because when you get back in there, when you're able to play, you're going to be thrown right into the ACC, right into the ACC play. You're going to have no uh, non-conference experience, and you didn't get much your first year because of injury either. So you have to be mentally prepared and locked in for every single game, for every single practice, just because I was thrown right in. Because my first game was, I think, Georgia Tech right in the middle of ACC play. And so uh, just having that experience and uh, now being able to uh, hone in my skills and being able to become a better player in the offseason is really, I feel, I feel like I'm thinking the next level. Even highly skilled, highly motivated, highly competitive athletes get nervous on certain stages. Sure. You're thrust into the title game. You get 18 minutes, which is more than you've been playing for the most part. How did you handle that? Was there a moment where you were nervous and quickly it got out of the way? Was it take me kind of through that and, and how you dealt with getting that added responsibility that night? I mean, the whole time uh, I knew that there was, I mean, I mean you play in the Final Four, the court's elevated, you know there's 80,000 watching you and there's however millions watching back at home. And, you know, it never really hit, it never, it never really hit me until probably like, a couple weeks after, like, like, wow, how far we came and how far, like, how far we really, like, went in the NCAA tournament and we really played on the biggest stage. But um, I think one of the funnier moments was definitely, uh, I think it was after the under eight media timeout, the ref tapped me on the shoulder and said, Puff, take a quick look around, there's really 80,000 watching you play. And like, cause like at the time that like you're playing, it's just like a normal game. I mean, of course, the course elevated, looks like you're shooting in the space, but I mean like at the time it's just a normal game and you're not really like, like you're not really, it doesn't really hit you that, wow, like this how many people are watching, this many people are like paying attention to the game. And so uh, once the ref said that, I really, I, I looked back, I was like, dang, like, hold on. Then, <laughs> ref trying to freeze you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he froze me, froze me for a second and then I just got locked back into the game. But I think it was, I think it was pretty cool. Um, looking back at it now, that I, I'm more of an appreciation for like what we did as a team, and like at the time, like it's just another game, and playing Duke in the Final Four was another game, playing Kansas in Championship was another game, and I remember we got the scouting report uh, the day before the Kansas game, and like we did, we've done what probably 40 scouting reports on the whole season, and then like I remember it was highlighted at the bottom, and like yellow sharpie it said one more win, you're a national champion, so like that's when like things really set in, and so. Uh, but to me, it was like a normal game, and because you played so many throughout your career, I've been playing basketball since I was second grade. So, yeah, probably just a normal game. A couple of personal points of emphasis for you this offseason? Um, I'd say probably just trying to become the best player I can, um, strength-wise and playmaking-wise, and more consistent consistency, and just uh, just trying to hone in on my skills. That's what I've been working on with the coaches, and working on my brother, and working on my trainers. Cool, thanks. Appreciate it. No I talk to him every single day. It's not twice Texting a day. Call. Text, call. I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been close since we were, like, literally since I remember. I mean, we've been close ever since we were babies, basically. And, and I remember we'd always play 2K together. So it's like it's 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 real cool to play with him now in 2K. Is he playing with the Suns? Um, he doesn't like 2K just because he feels like his player is not as good as he feels like he should be. <laughs> yeah. But um, they like playing more as a big. He's, yeah. He's not as yeah. They have him. They. When he first got put in 2K, he was putting as a power forward center. Right. And so he was. He's still pretty stiff. Yeah. So. Very stiff. <laughs> very stiff. Very stiff. And he hates the way he runs. He hates how slow he is. Yeah. He's like one of the slowest power forwards in the game. He's not even a power forward. Wow, I didn't realize. Yeah. That he's one of the slowest power forwards in the game. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, he doesn't. Like I remember, he told me it was one time he was like running up the court and he was trying to run as fast as he could to show 2K that he was fast. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's it's real cool like growing up with him and uh, seeing how great he's been so far and it's yeah. real like it's it's really like a cool moment. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Puff. No problem. Hey, Puff. I hate if you already answered these, but could you uh, talk a little bit about the development, the forward position, the addition of Nance? and uh, how you might fit in there with him and how things are looking in practice? For sure, um, he's a great player, very versatile, and um, he can play multiple positions, and that's great for this team because that's big on what Coach Davis loves, and he loves players that can be very versatile on both ends of the floor, not just offense, but also defense. And, uh, very good shot blocker, very good rim protector, very good lob threat, and very good shooter, and so all those are big, uh, big bonuses when you have a player like that.
what would you say that your biggest difference between you and Nance is? I mean, you're not obviously the same player, but... No, we're, we're not the same player at all. We definitely bring different things to the table. Um, I'm, I would say more of like a wing that can play forward, and uh, he's more of like a forward that's a really, really, really strong, good, athletic forward. And so we definitely bring both different things to the table, and that's what's so great about this team is that we all can bring different types of uh, different types of pieces, and uh, we can seem to put them together and come one. All right, and um, I mean, your freshman year is in the rear view. How do you can see these freshmen, how they compare to where you stood when you came in as freshmen? Are they more developed, less developed? How are they looking? For sure, they're looking great. Um, I try to give them tips uh, when I can just because uh, it's it's a different experience to come in as a freshman because you got older players and players that have been here, and especially a team like ours, a player who has, or a team like us, a team that has really high expectations. And so um, just trying to help them through it any way possible. Paul, can you just speak on just your ability, you know, not, not to only be a crowd favorite here, but just whenever your number's being called, you're able to produce on both ends of the floor. Can you just speak on just your expectations for this upcoming season? Sounds good, yeah. Um, so I just try to become the, uh, I've always, since I've been little, just been trying to be the hardest worker on the court. I remember uh, one of my grade school coaches said, if you're not tired, if you haven't used any energy on the court, no matter how well you play, that's not your best, and that's not what you can accomplish. Like you're selling yourself short just because. Uh, just I feel like you can't take any moment for granted just because uh, one day the ball stopped bouncing, and so that's the big thing that we live by. And so I just try to uh, just try to become the best player I can on and off the court, and just uh, bring the energy that's needed. So last year. Freshman year, your goal was to get on the court, right? For sure. Last year, your freshman, your sophomore year was to be healthy enough to get on the court. For sure. And so, what, what what's your individual goal this year? Yeah, my individual goal, I'd say just to try to be the best player I can be <laughs> and just to try to uh, help the team any way possible. Being um, on the offensive end and defensive end and never... Uh, just never taking any play any play off just because uh, we have the targets on our back this year and uh, teams are going to look at us differently than teams looked at us in the past, especially last year and the year before. So uh, I feel like uh, there's a very hype to play us and I feel like we need to bring a certain type of energy and certain type of hype to play them. I like what you said about being the hardest worker on the team because, you know, you had a little reputation when you were hurt that you were soft and you, know, For you sure. did that all the time. So... That all of that is motivating you even more to become the hardest worker on the team? For sure. Um, I, a big thing since I've been a kid that my dad has stressed is that if anyone thinks you can do it, if anyone thinks you can't do it, show them that you can. And if anyone thinks that like you're like weak enough, like never expose your weaknesses to other people. And so that's a big thing that I try to do. Um, just try to uh, be the constantly the hardest worker and just uh, never take any plays off. And, uh, just give 110% each play. Well, you, came, you know, you came came in with really no expectations last year because of the injury. For sure. And then it seemed like you, you weren't expected to be one of the first guys off the bench, but you were, and then you stood out so well. So how does that, how's your confidence moving into this year? Uh, it's, with it's, people watching you more? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot of confidence. Um, I've always had confidence playing the game. I knew what I could bring to the table even when I was hurt. So being injured never really affected that side of me just because I knew uh, why I was brought here and I knew that if I just give it my all good things will happen and that's with everything you do if you that's with life like you give it your hundred percent and good things will happen so uh, yeah, that's a, just a big thing that I've been trying to focus on each and every year thank you good luck no problem appreciate that yeah. it's gonna be your third year in trouble though now I guess is there a difference in this summer that you can tell with the level of focus and trying to get back to the big stage for sure um, uh, Last year we had high expectations, but of course not as high as this year. And um, we don't have many new faces, and so I feel like our bond as a team is definitely um, top level. Just because uh, most teams have a lot of turnaround, and we had a lot of turnaround last year with new players, new head coach, and all that. So I think it's pretty cool that uh, you can see the growth and like how close we become as a team. And so um, yeah, we're gonna have the target on our back this year, and we know that. So we just have to come ready to play each and every game. What are you, I guess, looking to add to this year's team, and what have you specifically been focusing on to improve in this summer, I guess? Um, I've been just focusing on just uh, becoming the best player I can be on and off the court and um, just giving it 110% in my workouts and just trying to be uh, as coachable as I can be and trying to take every single little point that people teach me to ultimately mold my game. And then, I guess, 
I know you had expectations last year, you know, being a top 20 team, but this year just seems to have been pretty much consensus top three team anywhere you look. Have there been talks amongst the team about how you're going to handle those expectations and I guess, like you said, the target being on your back almost every night? Yeah, I mean, we haven't really talked about that as a team. I mean, we, we all know that, like, that's what people are saying, but, like, we won't ever talk about that as a team just because uh, we know that even last year, my freshman year, this year, I mean, the goal is always to win a national championship. I mean, that's why you sign up for North Carolina basketball. You don't come here because you expect to be a top 25 team or you expect to finish at the top of the ACC. Like, you come here to win a national championship, win ACC championships, and um, that's what we all signed up for. So, I mean, we – we never really talk about that as a team just because that's the understanding that like we um, that we have coming in here. I mean, Leakley, Leakley had just said you know, the importance of how he sees this depth will be a little bit different this year and how there's not going to be an iron five and he sees a lot of guys hungry you know, coming off the bench or you know, playing a bigger role than they did last year. I guess what have you seen from you know guys who can step up this year? For sure. Um, I feel like we have a very uh, deep team and a lot of depth and uh, guys who are ready to uh, show what they can do and um, just very hungry to become the best players they can be, just like myself. I mean, uh, you come here because you want to play for a winner and you just want to uh, become the best player you can be. So, yeah, I feel like whatever, what he said was correct. And anyone in specific, I guess, that caught your eyes early on in the summer? Um, uh, I would say we've all, we've all had our moments and we've all uh, been developing very well and uh, it's turning out to be a very good, cohesive team that we're becoming. Yes, sir. Um, Pop, I just need to finish. Uh, have you seen a kind of a difference in Coach Davis from last offseason to this offseason? He's been around. Is he trying to implement more plays or put a bigger footprint on the team? How has that changed? For sure. Um, last year, it was his first year, of course, and so um, things were new for him, things were new for us, and just now we come in this year uh, knowing what he wants from us and knowing uh, like the type of level and of intensity he brings, and so uh, our big thing is we got to match that and the type of energy. I'm sure everyone's seen the type of energy he'll bring down the sideline, and so our big thing is definitely matching that and uh, exceeding that. Okay, and then maybe what are kind of differences between uh, Kyle Nickel and Jalen Washington? Obviously, Nickel wasn't really projected to play, you know, in the post as much as maybe Washington, who came in as a center, but. Um, what strengths and weaknesses do they bring to the team? Um, they both bring a lot of strengths, and um, they Tyler's a very good shooter, uh, very very athletic, and Jalen, of course, is a very strong and uh, good shooter and athletic big, and Tyler's more of a wing mm -hmm. slash big, and Jalen's more of a big, but they both bring uh, phenomenal traits to the table and pieces that will help us become a better team. Awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, bro.